Hi everyone, this is your podcast host Ramasha and I'm in my final semester studying Master of International Business at Monash University, Malaysia. And today we are here with our guest Dr. Helen Ho Hu Ping. Hi Dr. Helen. Hi, hi Ramasha. Nice to see you. Same here, Doctor. Uh, let me do a quick introduction for Dr. Helen for those of you who may not know who she is. Dr. Helen is currently a lecturer at Monash University, Malaysia and she obtained her doctorate in management. Her research interests revolves around women's entrepreneurship, enterprises, gender, sustainable livelihood and performance. Let me quickly mention a few of her publications. This is one of her articles that I'll be mentioning and it is titled Unveil the Secrets Behind the Success of Women Entrepreneurship in Malaysia. All right. Moving on to the questions for you today, doctor. Uh, can you share about your journey as a researcher on women entrepreneurship in Malaysia and what inspired you? All right. Thanks, uh, Ramasha. And um, regarding this research on uh, women entrepreneurship, uh, the journey that I traveled, in fact, was an interesting one because I got to meet quite many business women from uh, different business sectors and learn about the various challenges that they face and how they overcome these uh, challenges. So my interest to research on women entrepreneurship started from my postgraduate diploma time. Uh, we call this the PGD. It's a program. In fact, it was a topic suggested by my supervisor. At that time, I was kind of ignorant of what was uh, in fact happening right in women entrepreneurship in Malaysia. Uh, I always thought that okay, the whether they are men or women, the challenges they face should be rather similar. Right, because they are both in Malaysia, right? Both in Malaysia, men and women. So I was not very aware of the impact of gender, right, on the women's uh, entrepreneurial experience. So after I did my um, postgraduate diploma research on women entrepreneurship, I noticed that the challenges faced by women and men, in fact, they are not the same, right? And women face extra challenges just because them being a woman. Right, is uh, unlike men. Um, initially, I thought that okay, this, the challenges will be similar. For example, they may have to face a market challenge. Mm -hmm. They have uh, funding issues, right? And they may also come across a uh, problem managing employees. But later on, when I further right dig into the challenges that women entrepreneurs had to face, I noticed right. I noticed, and from the story shared by these women entrepreneurs, I noticed their challenges in fact are quite unique. Right, some of the challenges faced by them may not be faced by men at all. Mm -hmm. So after my PGD, right, I inspired to um, dig further. Right, I want to know more. In my PhD, I decided to bring in a lot more lenses into understanding their experience. So besides gender, I also brought in the elements of race. Mm -hmm. I bring in, I brought in the elements of business sector into uh, my study. And I got a lot of insight from the women entrepreneur uh, that I interviewed. And even currently, I'm still involved in uh, projects that deal with female entrepreneurs, especially at the micro-business, so micro-enterprises. Mm. Yeah. Okay, I think it's very important that we understand that women and men are facing different challenges mm -hmm. and it's very great that you wanted to investigate what those challenges were exactly were. Yeah. Okay, next question would be, what are the common challenges women entrepreneurs face in Malaysia and how did they overcome these challenges? Mm, women, they face some challenges that men may not face. Mm -hmm. All right, one of the main challenge, I'm not saying that men totally don't face this challenge, yes. right? However, women have a higher responsibility when it comes to taking care of their household, taking care of their families. Mm -hmm. So one of the common challenges that I got right from the women entrepreneur that I interviewed is that they must strike a balance between uh, family and business, right? So especially when they have uh, young children. So when they have young children, the challenge uh, become even bigger for them. So with uh, family support, this challenge may not be that difficult mm -hmm. for them to handle so it won't be so bad when we talk about family support right uh, the family support can come in the forms of whether they have uh, for example the elderly to help them take care of the young children right or whether they will be able to get some domestic help from probably a higher uh, a higher maid or a higher uh, assistant right mm -hmm. to help them in the household job and one thing that i found out from these women is that the support from the husband in fact is very critical um, this is because 
the support can either break or sustain marriage. It is not so much about sustaining the business, you know, because I came across uh, some of the stories of these women entrepreneurs when they have uh, conflicts with their husband, right? Mm -hmm. Especially if, let's say, they have to spend a lot of time in their business or when their business performance is so great, right, that they outshine their husband right. performance, right, especially uh, in Korea, then what happens is they, their husband may tend to get uh, jealous of mm -hmm. their performance, right, because they they are so shining, right, they are so shining uh, probably among the family members gathering, they talk about their business. So what happens is the husband may get jealous, the husband may get uh, too upset. So usually in this type of situation, what happens is that it's either the women play down their performance, right? Or some of them choose to divorce their husband. Mm -hmm. Because instead of keeping the marriage, some women choose to keep their business because they love their business uh, so much. Mm -hmm. So that is uh, one of the challenges that I see. I think there's a saying, right? All of us heard about, okay, behind uh, every successful man, right? <laughs> they stand a woman. Yes. However, the opposite, in fact, it's, it is true as well because uh, behind every successful woman, there needs a husband who can be very proud of their wife's achievements, mm -hmm. right? Rather than being egoistic or rather than being upset because uh, the wife outshine him. True. So this is uh, something that I've observed. So when it comes to this type of challenge, right, where they have to strike a balance between uh, business mm -hmm. and family and also to gain support from their husband, I notice that the women, they will have to spend a lot of time communicating with their husband. Mm -hmm. All right. Some may even choose not to talk about business at all in the family. Right, all right? right. So they don't talk about business at all in the family. Uh, for women who are in the same business with their husband, because sometimes husband and wife, mm -hmm. they do the business together. What some of the women tend to do is that they let the limelight shine upon the man rather than the woman themselves. So this is something that I find quite interesting, especially looking at how women right, may choose to step aside mm -hmm. to let their husband shine if they are in the same business together. Or the women, right, they may choose not to talk about their business and they don't even want to tell their husband mm -hmm. right, how successful their business is. Okay, right. so these are some of the things that I uh, observe. Right. Or I got from the story from this uh, women entrepreneur. Right. So right. that is uh, one challenge. Another challenge that um, women right may face during their uh, in their business is for them to establish an equal ground with mm -hmm. men. Mm -hmm. This is uh, especially true when it comes to businesses that are considered uh, very masculine. Mm -hmm. For example, in the business sector such as uh, manufacturing, such as uh, constructions. Uh, or even uh, business sectors that deal with, um, for example, like heavy equipment, machineries. So a lot of people may see uh, women in this business, they perceive them as they are just a secretary mm -hmm. or they are just a staff, right? They must be a masculine face for the business. Right. And a woman face doesn't match, right? Mm -hmm. A woman face doesn't match with these type of businesses. So usually when they appear, right, in front of, for example, their potential customer or when they went for uh, road shows or, or any trade exhibitions, the common uh, question asked mm -hmm. them is, uh, where's, your, where's your boss? Where's your manager? Right? Uh, and they are not being seen mm -hmm. as a manager. They are not being seen as a representative of the business. True, so true. this is one of the... Um, common right faced by women who are in the masculine business mm -hmm. we call uh, or we call this male dominated right. business sector okay. so they often being perceived as uh, they do not have the technical skill mm -hmm. they do not have the technical knowledge mm -hmm. and a lot of time they will be asked right or they may not be asked or people may give them the impression saying that okay how you as a woman how, how, how can you know all these things so for women, right, in this type of male-dominated uh, business sectors, what they have to do is they have to work very hard to prove themselves, right? They have to work very hard to prove themselves. They have to show that, right? Even they have to uh, put make their hands dirty. They have to show that, okay, even I'm a woman, I can climb up the ladder to check the malfunction uh, equipment. That is not a problem for me, right? Even this is a very he heavy equipment I can handle. So these are some of the things that women entrepreneurs will have to do in order right. to 
prove themselves that hey, even though as a woman, I can do this job. Yeah. Sure. So these are some of the challenges that we see women entrepreneurs have to face. Right. And I believe men, right, may not um, may not come across these type of challenges, especially when people, right, people or other people doubt their credibility as a businessman. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's a bit sad that how women have to kind of choose between the marriage or the business sometimes mm-hmm. and how people's impression is on them sometimes. Mm-hmm. So I think it's very great that you are investigating and kind of researching on that perspective. Okay, so doctor, what are the key findings in your women entrepreneurship research? Other than knowing all these challenges that women have to face, Right. One of the key findings, right, is that uh, women, in fact, they are very creative mm. in uh, expressing their agency. When we talk about agency, agency is about the power to act. So in different situations, right, in different situations, women will act differently. Mm-hmm. So it is as if they are putting up a performance. They are putting out an act so that they will be able to run their business right uh in a in a better way or they run their business right smoother in that sense the common agency right the common form of agency that i can see from women right most of the women tell me that is that they need to have a very strong belief in themselves and that is what we call the self efficacy mm-hmm. they need to believe in themselves that they can do the business well and because of this strong belief right these women what they tend to do is they tend to think very positively mm. right even during uh, times of challenges they will say okay this is uh, not going to uh, kill me and i'm going to continue regardless of how difficult it is so what they do is they keep thinking positively they alienate themselves from all those uh, negative people right they don't associate themselves with negative people they will just step aside and they associate themselves with people who can give them encouragement and support. Mm-hmm. So positive thinking or positive mindset is uh, very important for them. Okay, another thing is they set very clear goals. They know what they want to achieve in their business, right? And they also know very strongly that what is the purpose of them running the business. So other than self-advocacy and other agency that I see or the power to act, right? among these women entrepreneurs is that they have a very strong devotion mm. towards their business, right? They are very passionate. They talk about their business all the time. Even though I mentioned that yeah, for some women entrepreneurs, in order to um, overcome, right, the problems that they may have, right, with their husband, they may not want to talk about their business, right, in a family. But it doesn't stop them from talking about their business with other people, right, outside uh, the family, outside mm. the family. So when they show their passions in their business, quite a number of women found that business opportunity will come to them mm. because they speak about their business uh, with outsiders, any networking opportunities, for example, in di- during dinner time, right, or any opportunities for them to express their views about the business sectors, about how they can bring the business further or b- even bring this uh, business sector, right, or improve the industry further. Then they notice, right, other people will start approaching them Mm -hmm. and ask them for advice, ask them to be involved in some other form of business, for example. So passion brings uh, opportunities. And other than passions, right, another thing is, as I mentioned earlier on, is about purpose. They need to know what values they can create through their business Mm -hmm. and what their benefit they can provide to their customers. So pretty much is having a very strong belief in themselves and also the other one will be strongly devoted to their business. Mm-hmm. So that will be something that I observe okay. from my uh, research. And again, as I mentioned just now, right, mm-hmm. they they don't mind having some of the limelight mm-hmm. to shine mm-hmm. upon their husband when they're in business together. Women entrepreneur, right, another way to act is sometimes they have to hide. They have mm-hmm. to hide behind a man. They, they put men as a facade in mm-hmm. their business, especially at the initial stage of their business where... They have not established the uh, credential mm-hmm. or they have not established the legitimacy in the business sector. Right. So these are some of the ways that women um, 
overcome challenges mm-hmm. and uh, show, yeah, in fact, I have the power to act. I have the power to do something even though I face these challenges right in my business. Right, right. Yeah. I mean, it's very interesting to know that, you know, most women that they are very interested and also dedicated towards their business, although they try to downplay it a bit because of their husbands, but many of them are just like, okay, I'm self-motivated, I'm dedicated, I'm just going to go ahead with it. Yeah, yes. So, doctor, gender equality and empowerment are important topics. In your opinion, what steps can be taken to create a supportive environment for women entrepreneurs? When we talk about creating a conducive environment, mm-hmm. not necessarily only for business women, but can also be for women as a whole. One thing that I observe and I feel very strongly is that the society mindset has to change. Mm-hmm. Malaysia, in fact, is a patriarchal society, mm-hmm. right? When we talk about patriarchal society, we can look at some of the statistics. Uh, for example, like the Malaysia Global Gender gap index mm-hmm. right in 2023 uh, the score is a uh, 0.682 mm-hmm. this means that malaysia is kind of a bit far away from uh, gender equality because the score of one uh, 1.0 means uh, there's no gender gap so instead of having close to one mm-hmm. malaysia is at 0.682 and this ranking, uh, when we look at ranking right, among all the uh, countries that participated in this index, Malaysia ranked 102 out of 146. Mm-hmm. So okay. it is quite low. And when we compare Malaysia to a lot of others and uh, neighboring countries such as Philippines, Philippines is ranked, uh, Philippines ranked 16, mm-hmm. Singapore ranks 49th, Thailand ranks 74, or, or even Indonesia, mm-hmm. right, ranked 87. Right. So Malaysia ranks 102. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So from this index, we can tell that Malaysia is heavily, uh, m- many areas, right? Many areas, for example, in terms of politics, in terms of entrepreneurship, mm-hmm. business, all these areas are pretty much male dominated. Mm-hmm. Okay, so the chances for women to outshine, right, become uh, rather little or lot, uh, rather restricted. Mm-hmm. So to change the society mindset, right? I think it is uh, difficult because it mm. takes a long time yes. to make such changes. They will require uh, education, mm-hmm. right? They will require education. They will also require uh, understanding women's roles in the society, right? Women's roles in society is not just bring out the family, bring out the children, putting food on the uh, table, mm. through cooking or taking care of the household. Women can do uh, a lot more. Mm. So, how to provide this conducive environment? If you look at what Malaysian's government has done, we don't deny the Malaysian government has tried their very best, mm-hmm. right, to provide, for example, like financial aids, uh, some fundings to the women. Um, Malaysian government also encouraged women to go to work and then to, to return to work after mm-hmm. their children are, are born, mm-hmm. right, or even encourage women to go into businesses. All these policies, right, will not be fruitful mm. without a supportive society. Yes. True. And as I mentioned, changing the society mindset, changing the public mindset mm. about the role of women is a very long journey. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So regardless of whatever attempts by our governments or by all those uh, non-profit organizations, by all those agencies, what is more important is the people, the public has to change. True, true. Yeah, so that is uh, what I think. Okay, yeah, I understand. I mean, even though in the past, it's like women's job was to take care of the kids and the household, but now it's, you know, the modern times and it's everything's changed. So it's important that we change our perspectives, although it will take a bit of time to kind of achieve to that point. Okay, doctor, so moving on to our final question for you today. What advice would you give to aspiring women entrepreneurs who are starting their business? Um, I won't say I can give advice mm-hmm. because I myself is not a <laughs> businesswoman, right? However, through my uh, research, right, from my research, I see some common trends. I see some mm-hmm. uh, common patterns across uh, different women entrepreneurs. So I can offer some suggestions, right? The very first thing for aspiring women entrepreneurs, my suggestion would be 
for them to understand what values they can create through the products and services that they offer mm -hmm. to their customer. Because the values that they can create through their business mm -hmm. play a very important role uh, in terms of whether they can sustain their business, where the customer will come back to them. So that value creations is very critical. Right. That is where one of my findings is that the women need to know what is the purpose mm -hmm. of them being in business. What is the business purpose? What benefits they can bring mm -hmm. to the customer or to the public? So with that very strong purpose right, in their business, they know the values, right, the positive values that they can create to make a difference in their customer life. Mm -hmm. It can be in terms of solving the customer problem. Right? Even a simple tailor in this uh, tailor business or in childcare businesses, they are solving problems for the customer. So with a very strong understanding of their business purpose and the value that they can create, I believe women will be able to hold on to that purpose and hold on to that um, values and continue their business, right? Regardless of what challenges they are going to face. Mm -hmm. So that will be uh, number one, right? Understanding the values that the business can bring to the customer. The other uh, suggestions that I will give to the aspiring uh, businesswoman is to uh, mentally be prepared that mm -hmm. there definitely will be challenges, right, in their business journey. It is not smooth sailing all the time mm -hmm. and they have to be prepared to handle these uh, challenges. So the challenges can come in many ways, right, in many forms. Some of the examples I gave before, uh, it can be in terms of striking a balance between the families and business. It can be in terms of facing all those, all those uh, ridicule mm -hmm. or all those stereotypical perceptions that people have upon them. So all these challenges, right, they have to be mentally prepared mm -hmm. and be ready to face them. They must always believe in themselves having the ability to overcome those challenges, mm -hmm. regardless of what challenges, how the challenges take place or, or what the challenges may be. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the other thing is passions. They really need to have a very strong passion towards their business. Right. Because with that strong passion, with that strong, deep love of business, it can bring them far, mm -hmm. right? Without that passion, we can just give up, right? And anyone can just give up easily. True. So true. these are some of the uh, suggestions that I would like to give to aspiring women entrepreneurs. Right. And another thing is, from my interview, I also heard quite a lot of, a lot of these uh, stereotypical perceptions about women saying that okay women are too timid uh -huh. right women are a little bit too careful mm -hmm. right they are considered too much they make decisions very slow all these were some of the things that I heard about uh, women entrepreneurs so another suggestion that I'll give is when times is right after much considerations probably it's important for women to be able to move boldly yes rather than being mm -hmm. too Timid true, when true. it comes to uh, making a decision. They just mm -hmm. have to believe that that decision will bring them further. Mm -hmm. True, true. All right, that's all I would like to share with you. Right. I think it's important that the key point that you mentioned, we need to understand the purpose and also be motivated and have like strong passion. Mm. If we do not have a strong passion, obviously we might give up in the kind of like middle when we face some challenges and women also have to kind of make their mindset when going into the business field that obviously for women there will be challenges in the future and they would have to face it head on yes okay so that would be the end of today's podcast i would like to thank dr helen thank you so much doctor this was a really interesting chat and i hope our listeners kind of learned something valuable today all right. Thank you, Ramasha. Thank you for your time as well. Thank you for inviting me. Thank, Thank you, you, Doctor.